This is Learning Grass GIS, tutorial number seven. Starting Grass GIS with a new project using the ESPG code for spatial reference. On this tutorial, I will show you how to define, create a new location with this map set. We will use ESPG code to define our spatial reference system. I will show you how to start a new project, project using the sample data provided with the Grass GIS installation. You might need to review tutorial number one so you know how to download and install the data. Um, you will learn how to define a grass database and location name. You will learn how to assign an ESPG projection code. And you will create a user map set on your newly created location. Okay, we begin by opening our grass GIS instance. And once we're here on the window, we're gonna go on the right hand side. Um, First of all, we're going to be creating a new project location right here. Uh, on this tutorial, number eight, we're going to be using a ESPG code to set up our projection um, system. And we're also going to be creating a new user map set for our new location that we will be creating. So on the right hand side, we go to our manage section. We will click on the location wizard. And this will open up our defined grass database and location name. Again, the GIS, GIS directory that we created on <clears throat> tutorial number one, it's on the C drive, grass data. And this is where all of our map sets, maps, locations, and all of the data we're working on these tutorials will be saved. The project location name on this tutorial, we're going to name it rather simple, we're going to use the previous example we had, tutorial 6 location. So this is going to be our tutorial 8, I'm sorry, tutorial 7 location. 7, oops, location. And again, like in the previous tutorial, we need to give it a descriptive um, name to this new location we're going to be creating. So it's going to be tutorial tutorial 7 location and we already know uh, what the information we need so we should try to make it as descriptive as we can. We know that our project it's we want our start our new location using our UTM uh, NAT 83 and the project that we're specifically working on the area it's on zone 17. We know that because our either our project manager gave us that information, the client gave us that information or our supervisor gave us this information. Somebody has to give us some information for us to start a project and that's what we're going to be used to at our uh, new location. And we're using the ESPG code. Okay. So this is our information for our new location. We go ahead and click next and we're going to select the second option. Click on select ESPG code for spatial reference system. So uh, the window that comes up after that it's called choose ESPG code and it's just rather simple. From the previous information we had before uh, we know it's uh, UTM, right? And it's a NAT83, and it's a zone 17. So we might not need all that information to look for our ESPG code, but it will be helpful to have. So we have, we can do by description, if you don't know the code, we can always just, you know, align it by the description, and we scroll all the way down to the end. <clears throat> and once we're on the ends, which will be there pretty soon, there you go. We look for N NAT 83. Now, another piece of information that I forgot to mention is that we are on Northern Carolina. So we will be looking at the name of the state instead of uh, uh, the other information that we have that we had. So we're looking for NAT 83, North Carolina. And we're here. <clears throat> for this project, we're going to be using the meter uh, projection, which is not labeled, only the feet and the US is labeled. Meters are not labeled on this um, screen. So we have our NAT83 
North Carolina. We click and it's going to give us um, what type of uh, what we want to use or what the uh, data transformation we want to use. Again, we need to go back to what we had before. We know the, that we have a uh, Sound 17. We are in North Carolina. And we need to look for the one that applies to our example here. So we are not in Florida. We're not in Maryland. We're not in Tennessee. We're not in Wisconsin. And we're not in Washington. Or what is that? There's no double deep hole, but I guess it's Washington in here. So for this purpose, we're gonna use no datum um, because we need to set it up later since it was an offer on the list. And we're gonna click finish. And now we have, oh, again, we come back to this uh, window that will ask us if we wanna set our extent, project extent and resolution now. If you have that information, by all means, click yes. If not, just go ahead and skip that. We can add that manually. And just for you to, so you know what it looks like, we click yes, and it opens the uh, the region extent default window. It will ask us what your north in, the northernmost extent of your project, the southern more ex extent more of your project. Same thing for the east and west. And you know, and you will have your resolution and all that. If you have all that information, put it in. If not, you can add it later on. And you can go ahead and just set the region. So now we have the new location, Tutorial 7 location. And again, with the permanent map set, which is created by default every time we create a new location, we will be creating a permanent map set that stores all the uh, information database that we have. But now we need to create a new map set for our users either it's just for yourself or for if you're assigning different parts of the project to somebody else, you go ahead and create their own map sets. So we're gonna create tutorial, oops, seven user one. And let's say we have three users, user two and user three, oops. I forget, so user three. So we can assign different aspects of the project to our three new users. And then that's it. That's how we create a new location using the ESPG code to, this, to define our spatial reference system. And hope you had a better understanding now. If not, follow the links on the tutorial notes where there are more explanations and more examples and how to use this um, location which are in other um, useful tips that will help you better understand grass um, thank you this is the end of tutorial number seven by now you practice how to define a grass database and location name how to assign an espg projection code to your new location and you also created a map set on your new location and if you need any more help or need to understand more about what we cover on this tutorial, follow the uh, information links at the on the tutorial notes, so you can have a better uh, understanding of uh, what Grass can do for you. And again, uh, if you have any questions, problems, or comments, leave them on on the page, and I'll try to get back at you as soon as I can. Thank you, and look out for tutorial number eight.